Protesters in Belfast voice their opposition to an offshore wind power port on Sears Island. Good afternoon, I'm Susan Farley. A high-speed chase that ended on the interstate uncovered drugs, and lawmakers heard about the state of Maine's judiciary system. Thank you for joining us. We'll have more on these and other stories coming up. First, let's check in with meteorologist Conrad Supinski. Conrad? Thank you so much, Susan, and get ready. A little bit more snow will be back in the forecast. For now, though, just a mixture of some clouds outside and, of course, some sun, and things will be definitely deteriorating by tomorrow morning. Now, it says we're at zero inches of snow on the ground. Not quite accurate. We do have a little bit of snow on the ground. Millinocket area, a little bit more than that, around five, six inches, and then just west. So we're talking Greenville into those purple and pink colors, of course, indicating well over six inches of snow. If you're by the coast and you're a snow lover, you're not as lucky. You're pretty much at nothing for snowfall on the ground for now. Now, the winds, though, not too bad. Anywhere around 5 to 10 miles per hour all over the state. And that will continue to be a trend throughout the day today. And then we're going to stay above freezing. We're talking mid to upper 30s as we continue to see some decrease in clouds throughout the day today. Then for tonight, though, we're looking at temperatures in the mid to upper 20s, increasing clouds. And look what happens. Surprise, surprise. Snow will be back mainly late overnight all over the region. It's going to be widespread across the state. And then temperatures will start to rise. So mid 30s outside tomorrow. We're looking at that rain and snow mix here in town, north of town. So north of Bangor. That's where we're looking at a lot more of a snow accumulation, especially with more snow mainly a snow vent up north and temperatures near freezing or slightly above that. Later on this afternoon, though, we're going to continue to see lots of sunshine and then we're going to see some increase in clouds overnight. Thank you, Conrad. After Governor Mills announced Sears Island as the selected location for an offshore wind power port, protesters in Belfast voiced their opposition to the project. Our Doug Banks has the story. Along the bridge that crosses past the Gasawakeg River in Belfast, members of several organizations, coalitions and groups gathered in opposition of Governor Mills' Tuesday announcement. We need to know more about the economic analysis which has not been released to us. Those in attendance said they'd rather see this project on the more developed Mac Point, stating it could disturb local ecosystems, specifically coastal wetlands around Sears Island. The most important things to save on the planet because they act as sponges and they support the land to, to survive heavy storms. Protesters also spoke about an agreement signed by former Governor Baldacci's administration, DOT, and Searsport between 2007 and 2009 about developmental protections concerning the 941-acre state-owned Sears Island. That agreement, called the Sears Island Planning Initiative Steering Committee, states that Mac Point will be given preference to any port development. On that committee 15 years ago was Searsport's current town manager. Back in, in that period of time, we weren't looking at offshore wind. According to Gilway, Magpoint wasn't chosen due to its positioning, impact on the community, and the current infrastructure that would have to be removed. With two-thirds of Sears Island still under state preservation, Gilway says the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management has taken steps to protect the surrounding fishing industry. Recently, I saw one of their uh, presentations. They said they can never completely eliminate conflict but they reduce it as much as possible. Gilway says if approved, the project could be fully operational by 2030. In Searsport, Doug Banks, ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. Authorities made what they described as a dangerous drug arrest after a police pursuit in Bangor. Penobscot County Sheriff Troy Morton says deputies attempted to stop a vehicle on Littlefield Avenue in Herman around 1042 Wednesday morning. He says the vehicle failed to stop and led police on a chase along I-95 North before pulling over near the Broadway exit in Bangor. Police seized 142 grams of crack cocaine and 11 grams of fentanyl during the incident. The driver, identified as 27-year-old Jacob Hawks, was arrested and charged with unlawful trafficking and scheduled drugs, eluding an officer and driving to endanger and other offenses. 58-year-old Clinton Taylor of Bangor, a passenger in the vehicle, was arrested and charged with unlawful trafficking and scheduled drugs. Sheriff Morton says another passenger, 26-year-old Kayla McCarthy of Lee, was taken to the hospital as a precaution because she allegedly had dangerous drugs inside her body and was later charged with unlawful trafficking and scheduled drugs in violation of conditional release. 
A lawsuit filed Tuesday against the Bangor YMCA in connection with an abusive coach back in 1979 is shining a light on the pervasive problem of childhood sexual abuse and how best to protect children. We spoke with the attorney for the abuse survivor who brought the lawsuit, who says his client was sexually abused by a basketball coach working for the Bangor YMCA in 1979. Wayne Quimby, who was 13 years old at the time of the abuse, which occurred at the coach's home, came forward at the time. His abuser was prosecuted and convicted. The lawsuit alleges that the Bangor YMCA was negligent in hiring the coach in the first place due to a prior criminal conviction and that a simple background check at the time would have prompted them to ask questions and not hire the coach at all. Holding the abusers accountable is important, but also holding their enablers accountable. It's an important part of the healing process for survivors of childhood sex abuse. And it also shines a light on an organization and what it failed to do uh, that we hope will be a, a signal for other organizations to look at their policies and procedures and implement you know, what the best practices are. An attorney representing the Bangor YMCA says the Y takes any allegations of sexual misconduct extremely seriously, especially considering the number of children under their care and supervision. He says they are just starting to dig into the circumstances surrounding the abuse. They also say where the incident occurred is central to their case. If the incident took place at the YMCA, where the YMCA had um, supervisory responsibility, oversight responsibility, um, I think that would be one thing. Um, the fact that the complaint alleges that um, the incident did not occur on YMCA premises um, is very relevant. It's important to note that the Maine Supreme Judicial Court is currently considering a case that challenges the constitutionality of a law that lifted the statute of limitation on bringing these types of cases. That outcome could affect this lawsuit. Lawmakers heard about a backlog of cases left over from the pandemic, an ongoing attorney shortage, and the need for technology infrastructure during the State of the Judiciary Address. Our Augusta reporter Corey Bouchard has more about the recommendations and the call for action for lawmakers. A constitutional crisis. That's how the Chief Justice of the Maine Supreme Judicial Court describes the state of judiciary in Maine. We are in a constitutional crisis, folks. The state is obligated to provide an attorney in most criminal cases. We have people sitting in jail every day. Frequently, there's a dozen or more in Arista County alone on any given day without counsel. Last year, lawmakers raised the hourly wage to $150 an hour for attorneys who contract cases through the Maine Commission on Indigent Legal Services. According to Chief Justice Stanfill, that hasn't solved the problem of attracting attorneys to cases. For a variety of reasons, I'm not sure I understand them all, um, the numbers of attorneys willing to take these cases keeps falling. Chief Justice Stanfill adds that aging infrastructure, both physical and technological, will require millions of dollars in investments to upgrade and maintain. Another problem facing the judiciary is the backlog of court cases filed during the pandemic when court operations were restricted. We did our best, but people were distressed and the backlogs kept getting bigger and our workforce was trying to solve them and they couldn't. While they have made a dent in the backlog, Chief Justice Stanfill says they aren't anywhere close to completing, and some cases may still be years away from being heard. We have a data person who ran a, a model, I think he came up with something like 2028, um, possibly, or something like that, but that's also assuming we're fully staffed, and uh, you know that's always a challenge as well. The Chief Justice adds in order to solve these issues, it'll take the work of all three branches of state government. At the State House, I'm Corey Bouchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. A bill seeking to identify unknown human remains passed unanimously in the Health and Human Services Committee. The bill, LD 838, would allow the Office of the Chief Medical Examiner to test unidentified human remains using genetic genealogy similar to 23andMe and Ancestry DNA to find close relatives. Currently, DNA can only be processed using the CODIS system, which is a database containing DNA collected when certain crimes are committed. 
According to testimony from the Office of the Chief Medical Examiner, they currently have 20 sets of unidentified human remains in their possession. The bill will now make its way to the full legislature where lawmakers say it is likely to pass. Coming up on ABC 7 News at noon, a Waterville homeless shelter has narrowly avoided closure after facing a high demand for emergency housing. We'll be right back. It ain't my dad's razor, dad. Hey, watch it. It's from Gillette Labs. This green bar releases trapped hairs from my face. Game changer. Well, the flex this contours to it. So the five blades can get virtually every hair in one stroke for the ultimate Gillette shaving experience. The best a man can get is Gillette Labs. We all need fiber for our digestive health, but less than 10% of us get enough each day. Good thing Metamucil gummies are an easy way to get prebiotic plant-based fiber with the same amount of fiber as two cups of broccoli. Metamucil gummies, the easy way to get your daily fiber. Don't cry, don't whine. Get yours where I got mine. At BB's Tattoo Company, 262 Moosehead Trail, Newport. Good luck to all the area basketball teams in the tournament from Color Concepts, 840 Hammond Street, Bangor. Congratulations to the Hamden Boys and Girls basketball teams on a fantastic season from RK Variety. Hamlin's Marine wants to wish the best of luck to all the teams that worked so hard to make it to the tournament this year. Whether you can pinpoint the problem or can't quite put your finger on it, the friendly professionals from Coastal Auto Parts can help point you in the right direction. With Maine's largest network of parts, you can trust your vehicle will have what it needs to get you to the moments that matter most. Because Napa knows the keys to a winning team. And with 29 locations in Maine, Coastal Auto Parts helps keep our communities running. Team up together with the fuel that keeps us firing on all cylinders. Coastal Auto Parts is owned and operated by a Maine family that cares. Alcohol and anger were a bad mix. She just continued to keep disrespecting me. Then this party of four became a battle between two. I'm like, if you hit me, I'm going to hit you with this bottle. He said, that bottle's not going to stop me. I said, my car will. And then what happened? She came back around like she was going to hit me. What are you hanging around with these young people for? Age ain't nothing but a number. Yeah, I say that all the time, but it's not true. <laughs> Judge Judy. Thursday at 5, only on ABC7. ABC7, honored to be named Maine's Television Station of the Year. It's another busy day at the high school basketball tournament in Bangor. That's where Ryan Sudall is spending all of his time these days. He joins us with the latest. Ryan? Yes, Susan, and I would not change it for the world. Hi, everybody. I am here at the Cross Insurance Center where six games are on the docket for this Thursday, day six of the tournament, all of them Class C and D North semifinals. Action started today at 10 a.m. with the seven-seed Katahdin in D North girls pulling off the upset 42 to 34 over the three-seed wisdom behind Hunter Hartsgrove's 22-point performance. And then right now with the... My gosh, what we got going on right now is the number one seed, Southern Rustic. They were down early against Jonesport Beals. They're kind of pulling away just a little bit here midway through the second quarter. They're up 12 to 8. And then after this, um, of course, those two teams, uh, the winners of those two games will face each other in the D-Nor final. But then at 2 o'clock, we have the uh, C-Boys semifinals between number three seed for Fairfield and number seven Mount View, followed by number five Hodgden against defending regional champs number one Callis. And then finally, the nightcap at 7 o'clock, it'll be the two seed, Fort Kent against the three seed PVHS for the first C-North girls semifinal of the night. And Dexter, the number one seed and defending regional champs, facing off against Matt Knockcook Academy, the four seed. And we will have all the highlights and more for you on, for, on Fast Break tonight in the 10 o'clock news on Fox 22 and Fast Break Extended here on ABC7 during the 11 o'clock news. Until then, I'm Ryan Sudall. Back to you, Susan. Thank you, Ryan. A recent Supreme Court decision and subsequent legislation are changing the rights people have in the property foreclosure process. 
On May 25, 2023, the Supreme Court issued a landmark ruling stating that if a foreclosed property is sold by a municipality for a larger amount than the debt owed to the municipality, the owner would have to be reimbursed for that difference. After the decision, Maine had to quickly pass legislation in order to be in compliance with the Supreme Court ruling. Lawmakers heard from the Maine Revenue Service, which conducted a study on equity in the property tax foreclosure process. Prior to um, LD 101, the process was only, only applied to folks that were 65 and older and that met certain income and asset limitations. So it was folks that had income of less than $40,000, liquid assets less than $50,000. LD 101 expanded that and basically eliminated the age requirements, the income requirements, the asset requirements, um, and basically allowed for the alternative sale process to be requested for any property that was foreclosed. To read the full report, you can visit our website, foxbangor.com. Leaders and residents in Bucksport community are upset after learning the owner of Bucksport LLC is being given more time to figure out the landfill's future. AIM Development currently owns the landfill and it has not been operational since 2020. The Maine Department of Environmental Protection sent the company a letter last year saying they must submit a closure plan for the landfill by January 1st, 2024 and an outline to complete closure by 2026. Bucksport Town Manager Susan Lassard found out about the extension after checking on the status of the plan and was taken by surprise with what she found. Supervisors had had a meeting of some kind with Bucksport Mill LLC and had determined that they could have some more time to look at what their options were. That generator owned facility is not in any way, shape or form set up to be or has the capacity to be any kind of a solid waste landfill. There will be a town council meeting today for the public to comment on this matter. A Waterville homeless shelter has narrowly avoided closure after facing a high demand for emergency housing. Our David Ledford has more. The Waterville City Council voted Tuesday to allow the mid maine homeless shelter to put $200,000 in American Rescue Plan Act funding towards the cost of running the shelter, instead of the rehousing program the money was originally intended for. The shelter's program director, David Savetsky, says the shelter has to reallocate the money to avoid closing down. The operating costs of the low barrier shelter have gone, gone up so much that um, we weren't we potentially weren't going to be able to remain open. The funds were initially awarded to the shelter in 2021 to be used for the master leasing program, which would allow people to be placed in an apartment instead of going to a shelter. So the master leasing program was going to assist some folks in getting rehoused through the shelter itself renting or leasing the units from the landlords. That's not off the table. The mid maine homeless shelter is a low barrier shelter, meaning it welcomes anyone in need regardless of their background, 24 hours a day. And Savetsky says the demand for that kind of help has increased over the last few years. Our lengths of stay have gone essentially through the roof. In 2019, our length of stay was about approximately 35 nights, and now it's probably about 75 nights. With operating costs now covered, Savetsky says the shelter can remain open for the foreseeable future. However, city officials say they are hoping the shelter will receive more funding from the state. This is a, this is a state funding issue, and um, I know there are a couple of, of bills in the legislature, so right now we're waiting for those to kind of come to fruition. In Waterville, David Ledford, ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. There's some news about student loan relief. We've got details when we return. Great Scott! This is Green Bear 420 in 2010. What kind of trip is this? I gotta get back to 2023. Wait, it's 2015. So much has changed. In 2023, we had a lot more glass, t-shirts, and novelties. It's gonna take a bolt of lightning to get me home. Finally, home at last. Now Green Bear 420, Green Bear Green Care is bigger and better than ever. To be continued. Hello, this is George Whelan with Down East Direct Cremation. Now, anytime, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 52 weeks a year, from the comfort of your desktop or the convenience of your mobile device, you can summon transport and arrange a simple, affordable, respectful, Down East Direct Cremation for your deceased loved one. 
just by using the button exclusively at downeastdirectcremation.com. All you need is the location address of the person who has died, their vital statistics information, a valid credit card for payment, and that's it. No need to pick up the telephone, no need to answer a bunch of questions, no need to come into the store, and it's still just $9.75 complete. It's so easy, even I can do it. For more information, visit us at downeastdirectcremation.com or call us at 207-225-5332. Simple, affordable, respectful. The button, only at downeastdirectcremation.com. Your local professional eco-friendly office space partner is Levesque Business Solutions, your one-stop shop to get the job done. Handling all your office furniture and printing machine needs at an affordable price. Offering full system integration into your workplace and local service on everything we sell. We can even remote monitor your system with just-in-time inventory and service need assessments. Little to no downtime gives you peace of mind. At Levesque Business Solutions, your solution is only an email or a phone call away. Main station of the year just got better. Fox 22 News is expanding our local news coverage for you. We know it's busy out there. That's why we're starting the only local newscast weeknights at 630. We'll have your local and national news, updated weather, and local guests all at a convenient time for you. Watch Fox 22 News tonight weeknights at 630 on WFBX. There are some days when we don't mind cooking everything from scratch. And then there are days when we're pressed for time and we need to use a few supermarket shortcuts. And when our shortcut recipes taste as good as our from scratch versions, all the better. So let me show you a loaded main dish that does just that. The first thing we do is place a package of store-bought mashed potatoes in a microwave safe bowl. Starting with these saves us at least half an hour. Now we add some cheddar and Monterey Jack cheese, half a package of cream cheese, a bit of salt and pepper, and we pop this into the microwave to warm up. Once it's hot, we stir in some sour cream and spoon it into a baking dish. Now we turn this into a main dish by topping it with some shredded cooked chicken, a drizzle of barbecue sauce, and some crumbled bacon. Right before it goes into the oven, sprinkle the top with some cheddar cheese to make it even more cheesy delicious. When it comes out, it's ready to serve. It's kind of like a southwestern style upside down chicken shepherd's pie. To get this Roundem Up recipe, all you have to do is visit our website and type in loaded barbecue baked potato casserole. I'm Howard of the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a super shortcut way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. Since 1970, America has recognized February as Black History Month. Our Grace Blanchard spoke with a local collector of Black History to dive into the diverse past here in the Bangor area. There's over 100 years of Black presence in the Bangor area. What started as a mission to learn more about his past led one Mainer down a deep dive of Black History in Maine. The logging industry. That's when you started seeing the largest presence of blacks moving into the area. Local David Payne says his family has resided in Orrington for decades. After the passing of his grandfather in the 1990s, he has spent the last few decades discovering not only his history, but black history in the Bangor area. There's a greater presence of other ethnicities, of course, in the, in the state, but um, they're definitely an interwoven fabric in the community and um, have been accepted. However, in the 1920s, the area was certainly not immune to racial prejudice. Um, the KKK was here. As a matter of fact, the largest headquarters for the KKK in New England was based in Brewer. Although he says his family views him as a historian, he considers himself a collector of history and has helped connect the dots for himself and others in the community to their ties to black history. If I don't put names on the photos I have, if I don't document what's been told to me, what I've learned is great, but it becomes lost if I don't do something to preserve it. He hopes this Black History Month to see more young people immersing themselves into their own past to see how history is often weaved together. I hope the younger generation would ask questions and talk to the older generation. 
the biggest, the biggest way we lose history is by not asking. In Orrington, Grace Blanchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. President Biden was on the West Coast Wednesday. He announced that his administration has approved student debt cancellation to the tune of $1.2 billion for almost 153,000 borrowers. So if you qualify, you'll be hearing from me shortly. Thousands of people per month, or about 25,000 a month, or every two months will be paid on a 50,000 basis, but are eligible for relief, and they're going to begin a letter from me, let them know they're qualified. And when they get that letter, your debt's going to be forgiven. The trip is the Biden's first to Southern California since early December when they spent two days attending fundraising events. When we return, Conrad Sapinski has your five-day forecast. My father started a roofing company in the 1970s. Back when asbestos was still commonly used in Maine. When George was diagnosed with mesothelioma, we knew there wasn't a cure yet, but we knew he needed help. We called Jeb Bornstein's office because this family means business. Their team is handling everything, representing Mainers who were victims of asbestos exposure. We highly recommend the law offices of Joe Bornstein. Call Joe today for a free case evaluation. There's never a fee unless you win. Renovating or building new, you'll find a wide selection of high-performing, energy-efficient, and beautiful windows and doors at Hammond Lumber Company. Your Hammond sales representative will walk you through the showroom displays and help you choose options to create a personalized, custom look. Free in-home measurement is available, and Hammond can deliver your order from any of their locations across Maine and New Hampshire. Bring your vision and enjoy better light and added security and energy savings with quality windows and doors from Hammond Lumber Company. Good luck to all the area high school basketball teams from Cat Tracks LaGrange, your dealer for Hewitt Docks and Grasshopper Lawn Mowers. Good luck to all the area teams from Howard Insurance with locations in Dexter, Dover, and Newport. Gifford Electric would like to wish good luck to all the boys and girls teams in this year's tournament. Jamar Construction Products in Bangor continues to grow to meet our customers' needs, supplying products for site work contractors, concrete contractors, and survey and safety supplies. We are proud to be the local dealer for Hilti, Valley Blades, U.S. Fabrics, and Euclid Chemical, plus so much more. Stop by and see us at 1270 Hammond Street or give us a call at 907-4491. If you dig it, pour it, plow it, fasten it, lay it, or lift it, Jamar Construction Products can help you. And our main weather today is brought to you by Healing Hands Massage. Uh, Healing Hands Massage, professional massage services tailored specifically for their clients. Stop by Healing Hands Massage today. You'll thank yourself later. And get ready, folks. More snow. Yes, snow is going to be back in the forecast. It's going to be a winter wonderland. For now, though, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio into PA. We are talking a little bit more rain showers, even some thunderstorms down south. They were in the 70s yesterday. Wow, definitely record-breaking heat. For us, though, nothing like that. We're actually going to get snow out of this, and that's going to be by late tonight into early tomorrow morning, and then lasting throughout the day on Friday. For now, though, just some clouds outside, not looking too bad, but our future cast does show that snow rolling in overnight, very, very late. So pretty much early tomorrow morning, we're looking at some snow showers rolling in all over the state, even by the coast. We're talking some snow in the beginning. Beginning. Then temperatures are going to start to rise and we're going to be looking at that rain and snow mix here in town, south of town as well. Of course, the coast not looking good for your snow lovers in town. We're looking at a trace to around an inch and a half of snow. You got to go well up north, uh, pretty much Dover Foxcroft and north of that to tap into mainly snow and a lot heavier snowfall accumulations anywhere around one to four inches, mainly sticking around that one to three range. Some isolated spots will of course be I see a little bit more snow than that but the coast though you're going to see mainly a trace to half an inch of snow maybe an inch in some spots before it starts to melt away with temperatures rising and that snow transitioning to rain up north though Greenville you might be that big winner with snowfall accumulations 
maybe even over three inches of snow. The next couple of days, though, we're going to stay above average. A cold front comes in. We're cold for Saturday, Sunday near average. And then take a look at this right back up to the 40s and even some 50s possibly making a return by middle of next week. For today, though, decreasing clouds, temperatures back in those mid 30s. For tonight, though, this is the main event, right? This is when that snow starts to arrive. We're going to see increasing clouds, snow ar arriving late, temperatures around 27 degrees. So it will start to accumulate for tomorrow, though. We're going to see temperatures above freezing. That rain and snow line will be near town. Higher totals, of course, north of town. Our extended forecast outlook does show cold temperatures on Saturday, and then it starts to warm back up Sunday into Monday. Thank you, Conrad. That's all for ABC 7 News at noon. Thanks for watching. I'm Susan Farley. We'll see you this evening with Peter Dubois and Beth Jones on ABC 7 News at 6. Have a great afternoon.